morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is our open house, September 18th, Toastmaster meeting. Let's raise our hands for our president. Thank you, President. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And today is our special day. It's an open house. Uh, with that being said, we have a lot of food right there so that you can enjoy during the meeting, <laughs> after the meeting, even can you bring up or bring it to the workplace that or your next destination and you share it with your friends. That is our, our swamp welcome for you for the open house. It's a special day and as you can see, the theme is Renaissance, which Harun haven't Wrote in, written on the board yet, um, but as startup speaker Toastmaster, we meet up every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. and we start the meeting at 7.15. We have the history of seven years being in this building and welcome a lot of members coming here to practice their communication and leadership. And as we rise up in early morning, we want to bring that upbeat energy along with you, not only in this room, but elsewhere. Whenever you go, bring that bright energy to the people around you and for sure, bring it to yourself. Um, today, the theme is Renaissance, and I would like to invite you all to now standing up and listen to the invocator and explain to us why he chose the theme Renaissance. Please, Tyrone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So this week, as Jennifer said, the theme of the week is the Renaissance. And I was inspired by it, by this uh, Renaissance Fair that is going on at Hollister. <laughs> and so the word Renaissance means a revival of, or renewed interest in something. Historically, it has been associated for the time between the 14th and 16th centuries, when there was a revival of art and literature under the influence of classical philosophies and models. There were many causes for the Renaissance. And some of the immediate causes of the Renaissance were increased interactions between societies and cultures. These ins interactions inspired new ideas, challenged old beliefs and assumptions, and showed the people different points of views. With these interactions, Europeans rediscovered classical texts, ancient philosophies that had been carefully preserved in the Middle East and the rest of Asia. Now, all of this was disseminated by a new technology called the printing press. So what does this have to do with our club? This week is our open house. An open house is about interacting with new people, inspire us with new ideas, points of views, and rediscover some old friends and find some new ones. And activities that we have not done in the past and should bring back. Perhaps it might even open up new opportunities to innovate and try new formats and activities in our club. If there is one thing I'd like you to take away today, it is a spirit of renewal for our club. Thank you. <laughs> So standing right here is a special feeling for myself. Um, I was the president before that the room was full of people. We have we didn't have enough seat for people to come back then. It's a little bit uh, nostalgic or feeling, oh, why, why the club doesn't have that many people? But truly, it's about renewal. Uh, we can't always live in the past, no matter how beautiful, how splendid it could be but also need to focus on the presence and also on the future. So I don't mind if we have just two or three people left. For sure it's, it's a responsibility for the club members, to, for the club officers to bring as many people as we want. But we don't feel that that is a, too much of a pressure. But we also focus on the quality and the good members, the good people, the good energy will come back again and we fight for it. So I hope that every single person in this room today, the most important thing is you feel good about the meeting, you feel good about yourself once you leave this room. With that being said, I turn back to the Toastmaster of the day and hope that today will be a memorable meeting for all of the people who are sitting in this room. start off with, uh, with calling on the, all the duty masters 
do we have a volunteer for the op counter, which I believe was Jose? Uh, I got, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you're talking. Op counter. I can tell her. Oh, but you're speaking. I said, just accept, I said, right? Speak, okay, okay, I'll call. Oh, okay. oh, Dan. Would you? Oh, Dan. Oh. Okay. Okay. Dan, would you be our counter? Tell us what an accounter will do, and we might as well. So basically, don't tell everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The accounter listens uh, for if you use filler words like ah, uh, um, like you know, so, but some of those uh, like and and but aren't always filler words. But if you're using them as replacements for talking, just to kind of you know. Just to think for a moment, like I did a moment ago with you know, then it's a filler word and I'll be keeping count of it. And I'll give a report at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Jose has volunteered to be our timer. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, guests. I will be the timer for today. And with timing, we have, uh, we allot two minutes for table topics three minutes for evaluation, evaluations. Speeches is five to seven minutes. When you have two minutes left, I, I give a flag of green. Flag of green. If it's one minute left, it's yellow. Yellow, this yellow. And then red, the uh, time is up. There's a 30 second grace period. And then I ring the bell. And it's your, your time is up. And you really have to end. Thank you very much. Our next role is uh, Wordmaster, and Wai Meng has volunteered to be our Wordmaster. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, most welcome guests. The word for today is vivify. That means to endow with life or, or renew life. And the idea is to make things lively. One example of the use of the word is the rain vivify the dry summer hill. And you have to use the word every time you speak. And I'll count it. And I'll record it at the end of the meeting. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Our next role is grammarian. And <laughs> Dan has been volunteered. Wow, I have the sign in front of me. I must be me. <laughs> Thank you. So in addition to trying to keep track of your ahs and ums, I will also be attempting to keep track of the use of good grammar and any noteworthy uses of excellent word selection. Thank you very much. We need a volunteer for a ballot counter. Uh, Rod? You should. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Rod, will you please? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'll be the ballot counter for the day. And you get to, as, as part of this uh, uh, Toastmasters Club, you get to evaluate who the best speaker was, who the best evaluator was, and what was the best table topic. And the little sheet given to you, you can put in your votes, and I'll be counting them. And sharing the results with the president. Thank you. And our video master today is going to be Jose. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters guests. I will be the video master. Um, this will be uploaded on YouTube if you don't want to be in the video. I can uh, uh, tilt it away if you guys want to. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. Ne next, I'd like to ask our speakers yeah. to introduce ourselves. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. No. I'm sorry. It is a little bit early in the morning. Um, hi, my name is Thurlow Collins. I found out about it on Lolita, and so this is the first time I've ever attended any mm. Toastmasters event. Well, Welcome. Good morning. Dan, would you like to <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> I think I'm summer regular at this point. Hi, I'm Dan Riggett. I'm the area uh, director. I'm here for a fortnightly visit as well as the open house. And I'm rather impressed at how effective Meetup apparently is at mm -hmm. reaching out to people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, we're going to kick off our speaking. Uh, and our first speaker of the day is Tony. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, guests. Today, the topic that I share about is also linked to the theme of the day is Renaissance. So let's think about this word. But how many times that you plan to do something in your life? It's become so vivid imagination. You are so excited about that. And then you didn't do anything. Started with, but. Well, I like it. I love it so much. This is so useful. But. And then you just start giving some excuse, giving some thing that holds you back. So, let's think it this way. Each of us has enough resources from it within to change to do something new, to do something that you want the most. But that resources, that motivation from within is also the cause that holds you back from proceed to your goal. And it's useful, it's become handy because it's right in within you, but at the same time it's dangerous because it's right within you. It's invisible. You carry your butt from behind, all over the place. Didn't see it until it comes. When you want to do something so bad, and then the fear is also right there to haunt you. So let's put it this way. We do a very small survey, a small poll for everyone. If you feel that you are in that situation, please raise your hand. Are you, if you don't want to raise your hand, you can blink your eyes to me. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have kids? Okay. How do you feel when you tell your kids to do something? Is that it's a pleasure feeling or it's an irritating feeling? How many, so raise your hand if you feel it's a pleasure feeling when you ask your kids to do something. Are you good? <laughs> so the rest is irritating. Okay. Right. <laughs> what do they respond to you? There's always hesitation, right? Or hesitation. something, yeah, because they're always busy with something else. Yeah, but right. I'm always busy with something else. Right. right. Next. How many of you working in a group instead of working alone? So working in a group, you raise, raise your hand. Okay, so most to everybody. And how do you feel? When come up with the, when you ask someone to do something for you or to invite them to come over to something that you feel so excited and they didn't come, please raise your hand. Okay, <laughs> so everybody, see, so sometimes when people approach you and tell you something that they are so excited, they think that this is something that can help you to change, they give you all of the excitement that it come from within, but then the person who received the measures, sometimes they feel excited too, but they don't change. So what is the secret? Number one, the law of two creation. Whenever you create something, you create it twice. The first time you create it is in your mind. The second time you create it is outside. So uh, let's say you want to build something, or you want to make a cup of coffee, you, you build in your mind, like I'm gonna go to the coffee machine, I'm gonna make it. And then you make it, the second time, two creation. So if you want to make any change, make sure that you change twice. The first thing that you change is in your mind. If you successfully change it in your mind without any but, you can
can successfully change this outside in the real world. The second secret is the environment. Life is a battlefield. So the reason why, like as you say, Renaissance, right, from the invocator, you can see that he, when he described the process of Renaissance, the environment is that people reserve and hold on to some vibration. And they try to stay away from other vibration. So the environment is very important. If you really want to change from within, and you feel like you don't have enough motivation, or if you feel like you don't have enough enthusiasm, find the environment. And the third one, last but not least, this is a good practice that you sh try not to say the word but in any way. So you consciously work on that. Whenever you start to give out an excuse, whenever you start to hold you back verbally, mentally, you say, wait a second, so I'm about to give out excuse, I'm about to get all kinds of stuff. And it should not be that way. And then practicing not to say, but, is something that you can do very easy to practice every day. There's a key thing for you to take away from home, you know. There is the co coincidence that why the people who they say, B-O-T, but, if you add one more T, it's also the answer too much pain, you know, in the world. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you, Tony. That was quite a speech. Our next speaker, oh, before I let you do that, please take a few minutes and write uh, little comments on those uh, little balance sheets that you have for Tony. Um, all this feedback is really important. It's really useful for, uh, for our speakers. It's one of the reasons why uh, a speaker comes to uh, start a uh, table of Toastmasters and to get meaningful feedback. next speaker is Raj. Uh, Raj is a great impromptu speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'd like to uh, let's welcome Raj. Thanks, sir. Good morning, those fellow those masters and guests. So, we have heard this old story of hair and tortoise kind of thing. So there is a there is a race between tortoise and the hare. So the both of them start running at the same time. The hare runs much faster than the tortoise, we all know that. And the and the hare goes half the finish line and then it thinks, okay, this guy is gonna take forever to come. I'm gonna take a little nap and then I'll anyway gonna I'll I'll finish the race much earlier than the tortoise can. So this guy is take a nap, goes for a nap. And then the time it wakes up, it realizes that the tortoise has already finished the race and it has won the medal or cup. Now why am I telling the story today? And how is it related to my topic, right? So the topic that I'm gonna talk about is like the creativity and the attention. 
and how does it really help or pull us down when it comes to the creativity. So the hair and tortoise are probably like animals with three or four senses, but humans with six senses, we have a lot more complex brain than those animals have. The hair and tortoise, the, the hair at, when it was like participating in the race, the only thing that it had in mind was to win the race. And it also was kind of judging what my competition is. It knows that, okay, this is a tortoise. It can only run at so much speed. I can easily win the race, right? We humans also in our life think like, okay, so what is the, what is my target? What are my goals? We kind of set the goals. And we also look around, like the hair was looking around, like what my competition is, right? In addition to that, there is one more dimension that we bring in in our life is like, what is in it for me? Like, am I getting some fame and name and money out of this? So that if for the one of the boosters for your creativity, one of the catalysts for your creativity is like, what is the benefit that you're getting out of it, right? So the more creative you, know, you want to become depends on what is the attention you, that you would like to get, right? So for example, if you're a musician or an actor or, you know, let's say you're in a public facing, kind of a profession, then you put in a lot of effort, you bring in that the creative mind in you to, you know, jumpstart, you put in the first year, you do the first presentation, do your first music album, it goes big hit, you are like known, all of, all, of, all of a sudden you become, you get into the spotlight and people talk about you, and then there are only a very few people, statistics show that at only like 10 to 20 percent of the people can sustain that and move up. Right. In many, many cases, we know that, okay, yeah, this actor, I know him, he did the first movie, it was a very fantastic movie, and then after that, yeah, he did some traps, and then yeah, I don't know where he is now. So that is the case for majority of the people, especially who are in the creative industry, that is the mindset that they get into that, okay, so I've achieved enough, now I got enough followers on my Instagrams and Twitter and things like Facebook and things like that, and now this is my goal, I've achieved it, right? But is that the real goal, real goal that anybody should stop at, right? So including us, we are probably not in the celebrity industry or things like that, but we do little creative things in our, as part of our job, right? Whatever be the job, we have certain goals, we have some milestones, and what we tell to our mind as an achievement should be the bar which is much, much higher, right? I'm just quoting the speech that Steve Jobs gave in Stanford, be hungry, be foolish. Right? That's, the, that's, the, that's the final closing sentence that he said. The, the point that he was trying to drive there was, you, you never feel that you have accomplished. Right? The minute you tell your mind that you have accomplished something, the creativity stops. Right? So we should set our bar much, much higher and say that, okay, this is just a milestone in my life and not like a accomplishment, it's not like the finish line. Like the hair did, you shouldn't sleep at the half of the finish line, you should go really finish the race and then probably take a nap after that, right? You have a long, uh, a little more to run, don't finish your race halfway, thinking that you're competitors, which is basically your mind in a way, right? The human mind is much more complex. So you think that, okay, I have, achieved, I have achieved this, I have accomplished this. So that, that bar that you set, the finish line that you set, should be much much further in the in your uh, in your runway, and it shouldn't be the short ones, and the milestones are not the final finish line. So that's the message I wanted to give you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Two or three minutes to write some feedback for Raj.
this point, I'd like to invite our general evaluator, Wai Ming. Uh, Wai Ming is a longtime member of our club, a stalwart and a pillar. So, welcome, Wai Ming. Thank you, Harun. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Most welcome guests. We are going into the second section of the meeting, which is evaluation. Evaluation for the prepared speeches. And our first evaluator is Jennifer, who is going to evaluate Tony's speech. Let's welcome Jennifer. Thank you, Wami. I don't be reversed, though. No, we keep it. Oh, okay. Right. I got a bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. I thought there was a change. Good morning, Anna. Yay. Okay, good. Oh, my God. Now it's the real open so, house. The <laughs> fun part has been lit. Come on. <laughs> Come back. Okay. <laughs> 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 so for, for, for maybe some of you doesn't know, don't know, uh, Tony is my husband, so it's people <laughs> teasing that. Oh, I am evaluating him. Um, so uh, thank you, Tony, for the speech. Um, the strong uh, thing that Tony always brings to his speech is that his energy, his vibration, very good body language, and the topic is always pretty exciting. So that is um, that we appreciate Tony's speech, uh, especially today when he talked about how we always have but in our excuses to prevent us from achieving the goals. I love how he organized the speech in a very clear path. First is the introduction and then the secrets, the environment or the some suggestion that you suggest the people or in the audience to have less excuses in achieving our goals. Um, always, I, I feel like um, when you speak, you have the tendency to stand this size, more than this size. So I encourage you to move a bit more to make use of the space up here. Uh, the vocal variety, I love how you, when you mention about the whole, you drag your voice really long so that it is, um, insists on how we always holding ourselves back. Um, about the preparation, I do feel like uh, I would like to motivate you to have more preparation uh, so that uh, you have less filler words. And for example, in uh, the speech, you s use the uh, phrase, own kind of stuff. You repeated it sometimes in the previous speech too. So with preparation, I think that we can reduce that. Um, just one say, stay o take away from home. Um, maybe it's take away from the meeting. Is that my suggestion? And uh, at the Toastmaster, we used to have a traditional um, leadership and communication, but now we have the pathway, which we have a lot of different um, projects to work on storytelling, leadership, and other other topics too. So as a VP of Education, to I'm bring myself up as the president to challenge our VPE to learn more about those other projects at the Toastmaster International. So that you in implement that into your speech and help the people in our club to learn that too. So that is the challenge I would love to bring. Uh, with that being said, kudos to your own way a bit energy in the speech, and we look forward to have more from you with many different topics too. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And to evaluate our second speech by Raj is our second evaluator, Jose. Let's if welcome Jose. <laughs> Uh, what he said, and I did have a very good overall impression of his message. Uh, basically, it was the hair of the rabbit, starting off with that, with, with that, and uh, aligning it to the benefits of, of of really planning and keeping yourself motivated. So that was a very interesting topic. I I noticed that he didn't command the, the room very well. I would uh, I would 
recommend that he moved a little bit. That way, he can draw the audience. I didn't see too much voice inflection. There was a little bit voice inflection, but I would recommend a little bit more. It was a very interesting topic in that there is a human benefit to what he said. So I was very drawn into it also. And there's a lot of, there's uh, a few good points in it. I would I would think that maybe a few more, a few more, I th and I w I, when I timed it, it was about five minutes. I would say maybe a little bit, maybe about one or two more uh, benefits to the, to the analysis. In the introduction, there's a little bit of, I would say, what's the word? Vivify, vivify, <laughs> make it more interesting, right? In the, in the introduction, because he said the, the hare and the rabbit. So uh, in relation to that, I believe that I, there has to be some kind of draw, some kind of additional benefit to make it more interesting, I, I would say. I think saying the hare and the rabbit is good. But I'll just say a few more words in regards to how beneficial it is, give you that. And then at the end, that way, because most people, they will not catch the message along the way. So he would, I would say a, a brief summary and put emphasis on, on basically what the key points of what he was trying to say. I think if, if that was how he, he expressed it, it'll, it'll be very effective for the general audience and Again, like I said, uh, the, the a little bit more. Oh, there's a little bit more of the voice inflection. Also, I would I would say a little bit more in voice inflection and put some more emphasis on certain certain points. When when he he met, he mentions a key point, maybe more emphasis on that. And if I, I kind of if I if I perceive that, then that that's a good thing. I would say that that that's very very good. But overall, it was a good it was a good speech because I did learn from it. And so the content was very good. Just, uh, I think for the general audience, really for a bigger, bigger audience, you want to have more more dynamics in, in the way you present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you all the same. So that concludes the second part of the meeting. Before I get off the stage, I just want to thank you, Hannah, to who brought in balloons to vivify this room. And also, I will remind everyone to vote for the best evaluator as well as the best speaker. And then I'll turn over the meeting back to our Toastmaster, Haroon. Thank you, Ramin. Okay, so now, The less and the more informal part of our speech is just table, to uh, table topics. Table topics is, gives you an opportunity to do some impromptu speaking about a random topic that Jennifer, well, it's not so random. Jennifer's already uh, chosen a topic. And it gives an opportunity for to our, all of our uh, guests and members to come and speak about whatever, uh, they, uh, whatever their take on the subject is. So Jennifer, our Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. So the third portion of the meeting is ta table topic. Um, Deepak and Scarlett, maybe you, this is your first time being a Toastmaster setting. So this portion is the place when people will be asked impromptu questions. And then you will have minimum 45 seconds, up to two minutes, to present, to answer the questions. And as the Sarah Speaker Toastmaster, we always encourage the people who ask the question to ask the assisting member first, and then the guests will see it, and then you, you go from there and you learn from the previous people to answer. In this session, I encourage the people who will be asked to answer um, honestly, uh, freely and uh, feel free to express whatever you have in your mind or whatever you come with uh, your thoughts. Um, the topic today is Renaissance and I love how Harun explained it too, is the renewal. So very first question I would love to ask this person, uh, what aspect in your life 
that you want to renew it right now? I like to ask uh, Tony. Oh. <laughs> 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 then I want to come to the, the, the time that somebody has, like, tell me or I tell myself that I have nothing to lose. I realize that I still have something to lose. I need to lose weight. <laughs> so, you know, in the most, the, in the, like, the, my wildest dream, what I wanted the most is to getting back to the time when I was just only one. You can say in kilos. In kilos? Okay, 160 pounds. Only 160 pounds. And back then, all I do all day is just biking and hiking. <coughs> Walking yeah. and eating healthy, all vegan food, less meat during the week, and and I I feel like I'm so powerful. I feel I can do so many things during a day, and I love to meet people. So the energy is really high, and that is the only one that I want to work on right now. My physical energy by putting more weight, like some weight away, so I feel lighter, move faster, and quicker and farther. That's it. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so is that like a promise to <laughs> <Tao Tao>? <laughs> 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 Just eat the donut earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. And our uh, second question is: So the Renaissance is about art, about culture. So what is your, what is the best piece of art that you have encountered in your whole life? I would love to ask this question to Dan. What's the best piece of art? <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Don't have part of the art. For a long time, I never got around to putting pictures on the walls of my home. I recently started changing that, ordering various uh, pictures from online websites. And if you walk into my home, the first thing you'll notice is that my tastes tend to be a little bit quirky. I don't really go for pictures of, let's say, sailboats or scenery or bowls of fruit. I tend to go for I'm not going to say abstract, but the surrealistic mm -hmm. pictures. Like, for example, over my television, there's a big copy of Dolly's fruit bowl on a beach, which looks like a combination of a fruit bowl and a face on a beach that has scenery that looks like a dog. You can't really tell what's what, because he deliberately blurs the distinction between objects. Another one of my passions is Escher. I've got several Escher prints uh, lying around. I think the most realistic picture that I have is one of a ape teaching a class about evolution, which I thought picked up just because it was funny. So I can't really pin down one piece of art that I enjoy, but if I'm going to uh, nail it down, I would say the surrealists. Escher and Dolly in particular attract my attention because it presents something that looks almost real, but something that you will never find in real life. Something that you will not experience by standing next to a mountain and looking at the scenery or uh, at a table. And that just captures my mind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan, for sharing your taste. We feel like we understand you a little bit more now. And uh, when I mentioned earlier, Renaissance is about bringing back the art and the culture to the century of 14 and 16, right? So American uh, people or American culture is actually a melting, melting pot that a lot of people from all over the world come in here and bring the piece of the cultural thing that they have or they embrace in their home country. So if you can bring one thing culturally from your home country to America, what would you bring, Deepak? <laughs> Take some time to, you have two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> From the 
some part where um, what I can bring back to uh, to this country uh, from where I come from, uh, I would say uh, there are quite a few things I feel. Uh, it's, uh, say for example, uh, we have uh, the family there where it's a lot of uh, uh, warmth and the people uh, around where we uh, come from. It's a lot of friends and family uh, where we uh, get to interact with. And uh, I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind uh, because we just, came here and uh, yeah, I think that's something that strikes me right away. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of play, uh, things that we get to do. Um, uh, th I think that's uh, something uh, I could think of at right, right uh, now, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dipak. Thank you. Thank you, Dipak, for, for sharing that and thanks for sharing that you are new here. So it's remind a lot of us in this room about the day that when we first come to the United States. There's a lot of challenge and, and overcoming fears and stuff. But I think America, the best cultural thing that we have is the uh, welcoming culture. <laughs> and we Im want to embrace that culture in you. <laughs> then you, you're laughing. Uh, and we want to embrace that, that culture here in, in the club. Yeah. Thanks, Deepak. Um, so Renaissance is also about remembering the previous time that it was good and you want to renew that, you want to bring that goodness back to the current stage. Speaking of that, uh, can you please share with us the best time in your life and what is the difference now compared to those previous past days? I would love to hear from Wanda. Best time in my life. Every day is the best time in my life because I'm alive. I keep saying that because that is true. <laughs> Yesterday I was alive. Today I'm alive. And today, right now at this moment, is the best time I, in my life because there are balloons. <laughs> People here. I feel vivified. It's very nice. And, and I can't reiterate. It's so great to be alive. If I'm if I'm not alive, then I don't see Jennifer or Tony or Dan and Hannah and Deepak, and I can go down the list. I don't see balloons. It is fun, and there's so many things we can do. Yeah, whether it is public speaking or work or learning or talking to other people. So I encourage you stay alive for as long as you can. I try to. Miss <laughs> Thank you, Marvin. So thank you for that, um, I have to say, simple, but yet a uh, very interesting answer. So we don't always have to regret or remember about the past day. But the present day is also beautiful in its own sense. And I agree with one thing that uh, actually the balloon lights up a lot in, in this room. And uh, thank you for doing that because it, it made you come in here late too for, for waiting so long for that. Um, so um, speaking of remembering about the best day in your life, um, for sure that there's a lot of effort. There's a lot of lessons. There are a lot of secrets too. But let's say if you are happy with where you are today, tell us about the three things that you learned the most from your journey, overcome all the challenges and welcome all the opportunities. This I want to hear from Raz. Everybody has a journey line and even I have a journey line. So the first and foremost thing that I learned in my journey line was how did I c overcome the problems that I was facing when I was like fallen in the deepest valley? Like who really helped me? Was it me who climbed up the valley to come to this stage that I am? Or was it the people who understood me really and helped me at the right time and the right place 
so that I could move up, right? So now, one, I am thankful for those people and those kind-hearted people who helped me, and that is one thing that I would like to do to my, you know, friends and family and the next generation if possible, that it's okay, you can run, you run your race, but I will come and I'm there to, you know, help you when the time is really going bad and things are not working out, I am there to help you. So that is one thing that I learned and I would like to give back. The second thing is, it is also important to know what is your strengths and weaknesses, right? So in the, in the journey line, I was kind of lost, like, a, like the heron tortoise story that I was telling. I didn't know what my strengths are. I probably was trying something that didn't work out. I was trying something else that, I didn't, that didn't work out for me. But then at some point, I had to really think about like what is my strength and what is that I can really get out of this life rather than trying some guitar thing that doesn't work for me. I can't become a sprinter and you know become Usain Bolt tomorrow, right? So what is my strength? Where can I channel my energy? That was that renaissance, renaissance period in my life, probably in my 14th or 15th year age. So that is the second lesson that I learned, like what are my real strengths and weaknesses? The third thing is like that, the, the, again related to the speech that I was talking about in the morning, like what is my goal? What is the purpose of this life? Right? The life calling in last uh, thing that Jennifer, that's the new word that I learned from Jennifer last time. So what is, the, what is my purpose of, what is the purpose